was one of the first what you might call new wave films, like The Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner, these gritty, real films. So you were very young when you made this film. I, I was. Were you 19? Uh, yes, yes, just 19. Just 19. Yes. And, and what, at what point were you in your career when you made this well, film? Well, I'd started when I was 17, and I'd done um, a certain amount of TV. Then I was asked to do um, uh, the film with Laurence Olivier. Term of Trial. Term of Trial. Yes. Uh, then I did... Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner with Tom Courtney. And um, then along came Sammy Lee. Yes. yes. Okay. So this was your f first major role. It was then, my really. first major yes. role. Yes. Yes, yes it was. And can you remember how the part came about? Um, no, I don't remember. Uh, I remember knowing that the story had been um, a one man show which yeah. Ken Hughes had written yeah. and that this was an elongated version and that uh, Ken had written a lot of characters around Sammy. So it started and off, you tell the, it started off as a, a television play basically, it did. just it featuring Anthony Newley in, in a room on the phone which I think comes through in the film because there's a lot yes. obviously of him <laughs> sort of doing those bits on there but obviously you say they, they opened it out yes. to... To, exactly. to include a bit more of the milieu yeah. of the I think that so Ken much. Hughes and Anthony Newley got on very well. Mm -hmm. I think they were uh, sort of real mates. Yeah. And he did it really for Anthony Newley, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, okay, so you presume you got the part through your agent, I would imagine. Yes, yes. I did. Yeah. Yes. Did you audition? That's wonderful. No, I didn't. Yeah. I went and met... Frank Godwin and Ken Hughes, and just spent about no, not a lot of time with them, about 20 minutes, I think. Right. So, when you hear what people have to go through today, it's <laughs> yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. And um, about a week later, they rang and said, Would I do it? Fantastic. Yeah. So, they sent you the script, and what, what did yes. you make of it when you read the script? Oh, I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine, can't you? Um, and I tell you something that's really interesting, and I found my old script, because I always kept major scripts. It was then called The Small Sad World of Sammy Lee, yeah. which uh, I, whenever I go to say, or oh, the small, I want to say Small Sad World of Sammy Lee. Anyway, yes, so I was sent the script and was paralyzed with fear about the striptease and, well, just generally everything, as you can imagine, a 19-year-old. Um, so um, it was agreed that the striptease part would be done by a double. They would get a body double to do the striptease. Okay, so I thought, this sounds fine. Uh, you know, I agreed. So that was fine. Well, when it came, <laughs> when it came to it, the girl that they had got, and thank goodness I can't remember her name, um, <laughs> was so awful and fat and dreadful <laughs> that I turned round to Ken Hughes and said, I'll do it. <laughs> was that your actual dance sequence? Yes, yes. It was, well, yes. Well, did you have a choreographer for that or did yes, you just. Kind of eventually, yes. <laughs> anyway, oh. <laughs> that must have been memories. I tell you, <laughs> that must have been quite nerve wracking. It was yes. very nerve wracking. Yes, and the the other girls in the club were they all actresses or were some of them actual dancers? Do you know, I don't know. I think they were probably um, dancers, but um, were keen on being actresses. Right. I okay. And I have to say that I think Ken Hughes, God bless him, um, did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah, getting the body double. In getting the yeah, body double to, to yes. get you to do to it. Make me do it. Yes, I think so. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, what 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 did your parents think of all this <laughs> stripping and, and I, I, nude scenes? I, you I, had? No, I don't really know what they thought. Um, I think that you know they they knew that it was my career, it was what I wanted to do, and that um, to play a starring role in a yes. in a big movie was really quite something. Yeah. So. Uh, so I don't think they uh, objected. If they did, they didn't say anything to me. And I can't remember them. You do understand this is 50 years ago, <laughs> don't you? Um, I can't remember them seeing the film. Oh, really? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 
the, the role of, I mean, obviously Auntie Neely is the, the centre of the film, and, yes. but Patsy is almost kind of the, the eyes of the audience in a way. You sort of come into the world and we almost see it through through, through your eyes. Or something. Yes, exactly. So how do you actually approach the, the, the role itself in preparation? Um, well, as I always approached every role, I used to build up a character um, you know, where did she go to school? Who were her parents? What was she like? To, to get a three-dimensional character going. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Patsy was quite strong in a way. I, I mean, I know she appears to be sort of very vulnerable mm-hmm. and frail, but not really. Um, so it was an interesting role uh, to get one's head around. Yes. And can you remember any of the sort of ideas you had about her background? And where she yes, from? I can. I remember, you know, that she came from a northern background and probably went to um, a reasonably good school and then, um, you know, wanted uh, to sort of be an actress or a dancer because yeah. I think she was doing that when she first met uh, Sammy Lee. Yeah. And um, so, yes, I built up. A, a story for her. Yeah, wonderful. So, what was Anthony Newley like to work with? Oh, he was, was wonderful. He was, uh, and he was very kind to me, um, knowing that it was my first uh, major role, and um, we got on really well. Uh, he, he was wonderful, and I have to say, <laughs> unlike Ken Hughes, who was the most wonderful director. And I think that this story that I'm about to tell probably um, illustrates what a good director he was. He shouted at me, he grumbled, he looked away, he wouldn't watch. He was verging on being very unpleasant. And I suffered, I did everything I could to try to please him. And years later, I met him. And uh, by that time, I had more confidence in myself. So I was able to turn around to him and say, you were really mean to me. And he said, of course I was. He said, I wanted you to be vulnerable and frail. And he said, that was my way of doing it. And I thought, okay, that's a good director. (laughs) But but newly, did he sort of take you under your wing, under his wing? I mean, obviously you were very young with a cast of much older actors. Did you feel kind of looked after? Yes, b- beyond in a way. I mean, direction? listen, Tony had it, it was such a role to play, yeah. and he had, uh, you know, it, it wasn't easy for him. Yeah. So uh, he, yes, he was very kind and very good, and he was very keen on rehearsing a few scenes okay. before we actually shot them, and. Um, so he would kind of take you aside to rehearse? Yes. But, oh, okay. In, yeah, which was unheard of then. Yes. Today it's not so unheard of. Yes. But, and uh, Wolfgang, God bless yes. him, um, who, who just died, as we know. What a wonderful job he made of the cinema yeah. photography. I mean, it was, it was just, it made the film, that gritty realism that he brought. Um, he was called Sue. Everybody yeah. always called yeah. him Sue. And um, his reputation came ahead of him. I mean, when I was told that he was going to be, even I at 19 uh, was aware of his um, photography. He was really a famous photographer. And um, it was a real joy to be there with him. And and I gather you, with Anthony, you kept in touch uh, after the film. Yes, for for many years, on and off. You know what it's like in in this business. You you meet people now and again, and you pick up like it was yesterday. So, uh, anyway. He was an incredibly talented person beyond acting as well, didn't he? Yes. In in terms of music. And I should say to the audience that if you go onto the BFI website, uh, bfi.org.uk, you can read a fantastic blog by my my fellow curator, Vic Pratt, all about Anthony Newley and his career. And it's a really, really interesting read if if you want to find out more about him. Um, oh, and that would be good. And I must ask about Robert Stevens, who's the sort of the club owner, Jerry. Yes. I, I have heard some interesting stories about him from other people. Was he quite a character? <laughs> he was certainly quite a character, but he was very nice to me. I don't think he was nice to everybody. Um, I th- uh, you know, he was... Uh, what, what, how would you describe him? He was kind of slightly aggressive uh, as a person, as well as, um, you know, in the... In the film, but he was very nice to me, so I haven't got any <laughs> any grudge with him. Excellent. Okay. Um, so the the film was came out in 1963, which was yes. you know the, the the era of swinging London and the Beatles and things. But this 
film pro projects a really different sort of side of, of London, a really much, yes, much it certainly grittier, did. It was one darker of, side. It was one of the first, what you might call, new wave films, like The Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner, these gritty, real films. And yes, it certainly showed uh, Soho at... Well, it, it wasn't very pleasant, was it? Yeah. Um, and it's certainly different today. Absolutely, so, uh, yeah. But, um, and I, I know the film got some, did get some really positive reviews, but I think some people did find it a little bit... Well, I think they found it hard much. to take. Yeah. Uh, you know, was this entertaining? Yeah. Um, so, yes, I think there were a few... Um, picky reviews, but uh, I mean, ninety percent of them were wonderful. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the, the final sequence where he does finally yes. get his come up, and they don't shy away from it. No. I mean, I think a lot of films you Not would have just all. the camera would have panned away, and, and yes. you wouldn't have seen yes. um, that, that, exactly. that happening. Yeah. Do you remember the premiere at all? Did you was did you? Yes, I long? can remember um, being as frightened to go to a premiere wow. as I had to even actually doing the movie. Yeah. Um, yes, I can remember it. Um, it wasn't like premieres are today with red carpets and you know fancy clothes and everything. Yeah. It was kind of slightly low key, rather like the film. <laughs> Um, no, I think it was Great Windmill Street. Do you know, I can't be 100% sure, oh. but I think so. And they built, uh, I, I mean, the front of it was obviously built, uh, especially for the movie. Uh, but I, th I think it was Great Windmill Street. You can actually, there is a website called realstreets.com where they, they, there's all lots of pictures and they tell you, lots of, and then lots of people have gone around and taken pictures of them now to compare. So you can actually have a look at that and it will tell you exactly. Oh, right. but, but presumably a lot of your scenes were actually in, in the studio, I would imagine. Um, very few. Uh, well, yes, all the things in his flat uh, yes. were. That yes. was all studio. Yeah. Um, and, and the club, was that? The club was... No, it, w it was in the studio. Yeah. You're quite right, yeah. it was. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it definitely helped. Um, the reason I say that is because a little while later, um, Lewis Gilbert, who had seen the film, cast me um, in Alfie with Michael Caine, uh, playing a similar role... Uh, to Patsy, and so without that, maybe I wouldn't have done Alfie, which was a stunningly big move in my career. And then, of course, you went, got even better after that, didn't it, with half a sixpence? With half a sixpence, yeah. yes. Yes. In, yes, with Absolutely. Tommy Steele. Yes. <laughs> um, yes, it was. Michael Winner cast me, I think, I wish I could remember the date of the system. I can't 63. remember. Was it, yeah. was it 63? It must so be just it after this. Probably just yeah. after this. Yeah. <gasps> with Oliver Reed. Oh what was goodness. Michael Winner like to work with? Oh, because Michael Winner. <laughs> Michael Winner was a wonderful character. Yeah. He, uh, I, I mean, later, many, many, many years later, I did that funny commercial with him, which is Calm Down to <laughs> It's Only an Advert, um, which be has become a, a real slogan. Michael was all front and all bravado. And underneath was actually a very kind and very nice man. And, and actually, I mean, people do sort of joke about his filmmaking, but the system is a very good film. Yes. And actually, at that period in the 60s, yes. he made some really interesting films. Yes. Uh, and I gather you, 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 you've made a film recently. You're still actually oh. working. Well, I, yes, I sort of haven't really done it lately. And yeah. then suddenly Oliver Parker um, rang... I, I still had an agent and said, oh, where's Julia Foster? Could she come see me? I've got something she might like to do. And I went to see him and he asked me to play Michael Gambon's dotty sister, Dolly, in Dad's Army. So, <laughs> so that, that, that was a real treat. And the cast for that oh was fantastic, my goodness. wasn't it? Like you saw Courtney some old friends. Yeah. Yes, Bill Nye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 